Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. <clears throat> Today we're taking a look at the Polar Shark Submarine with Ice Storm from the Rise of Cobra line. So this came out in uh, 2009 with the Rise of Cobra movie, of course. Uh, this particular set came from Ross's, evidently, and it has a $8.99 price tag still on it. So, uh, used to retail for $8.99. Got to pay a little bit more for it nowadays, but uh, still, it's a really cool looking set here. It comes in a nice boxed window thing, so you can see the actual figure itself and the vehicle inside. Uh, some nice little artwork here on the top. Flipping it over to the back, we see the cool little action, fi uh, action features. Rotating tail plane, detachable missile launchers, opening cockpit and the Ice Storm figure. And on the bottom, you've got your file card for Ice Storm, so don't forget about those if you are a collector of those things. Um, so let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see what it is all about here. And I think this uh, particular vehicle was seen real briefly in the movie, towards the very end when they're assaulting the Arctic some of them fly around to these things a little bit here underwater, so uh, still it looks like a cool little vehicle, so uh, I'm anxious to see what it is actually like once we get it out of the box. There we go. Toss that to the side for the time being. Uh, flipping it over to the back, we've got the accessory kit and all this other cool stuff that we got to deal with here. Lots of tape on these things. And tape's actually coming off of that one, so that's fine. No big deal. Uh, we've got these little plastic tabs that are keeping part of this vehicle in place. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut that one off. And we've got these uh, weird twist tie things that are not really twist ties, but they're that weird rope stuff. And then on the bottom here, uh, another piece of uh, tape holding the figure in place. So I'll slice that open. Go ahead and uh, pull the figure out. Like so. And we'll come back to this and I'm going to use my wire cutters here to cut these uh, twist tie things. Simply because I don't really want to bother <laughs> trying to go through the process of actually untying them. They're not too terribly bad, but I don't have as much patience as I used to, so. <laughs> There we go, and then the thing just falls out. So <laughs> once you get that free, the rest of this is just uh, recycling material. So I'll toss that to the side. Uh, the vehicle itself is uh, not really a whole lot. Nice, cool figure. The accessory kit that has the instructions with it, and uh, that's pretty much all we've got. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in on this thing and uh, take a closer look here. We'll take a look at the accessory kit first. Got a little small piece of tape here on the back holding the bag together. Then we can just dump everything out here and see what we got. Got a missile that wants to roll around a lot. Uh, cool little sticker sheet here. Looks like it's uh, missing a sticker which is odd, but uh, eh, it is what it is. Then we've got the instruction sheet here. Very basic instruction sheet. Not a whole lot going on here, so no big deal. On the back, you've got where you apply all your decals to. So yeah, kind of cool.
the actual vehicle itself is not got a whole lot going on for it um, so instruction wise there isn't a whole lot here uh, this one did come with a couple of the stickers already pre-applied which is why they were missing I guess from the uh, sticker sheet so not that big a deal um, but whatever uh, really the only thing we have to put together is the actual missile launcher itself and it's pretty much as simple as here is the missile here's the launcher attach it like so until it clicks press the button to fire that's your missile launcher feature then the actual launcher itself attaches to the underside here so if you flip it over you've got this one large peg here in the center and this uh, circular thing here you just line that up and uh, Press down on it to get it to snap in place. Then load your missile back on there. And that's pretty much it. You're, uh, you're done. <laughs> there isn't really anything else to do here. So, yeah. Pretty straightforward. Not that big a deal. So, um, I do see that there are a couple of these uh, rubber bands on the back side. I missed them earlier, so let's go ahead and uh, slice them open and pull that off if we can here. And that actually just frees up this uh, spinning bit here so you can uh, spin it around and simulate whatever you want to simulate with it spinning. So yeah, uh, not a whole lot going on there. but. Uh, Still, it looks pretty cool. It does have an open canopy. It uh, actually opens to the side, which is uh, a little bit strange, but still works. You've got the fairly detailed cockpit here that looks more like a tomb or a cryo chamber than it does anything else. So, I don't know. Still, quite a bit of detail work on this thing. It looks cool. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sorry. We'll take a look at the actual figure itself. So this is uh, Ice Storm. Uh, he's still in his plastic, so he's got some rubber bands holding him in, so let's go ahead and cut those off. And he should pop right out really easily. How about that? That doesn't usually happen that easily. Uh, get rid of these rubber bands around his legs, his arms. There we go. So the figure itself, um, pretty straightforward. It's kind of the, the same sculpt we've seen in a lot of these uh, Winter Soldiers, I guess you would say it. Um, he's got a very interesting web vest here thing. Uh, he's got this cool satchel on the side, and that's pretty much it. So not a lot to really say about the actual sculpt itself. The, uh, the color scheme works really well. It looks really nice, the red and black and silver. The I don't know why they went with blue on his gloves, but they did. Still, a really some nice detail work on this thing. It looks really cool. Um, the figure itself, you can't really see much about his head sculpt or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic, but uh, it still works really well. Uh, articulation wise the head does spin 360 degrees but with the collar on his parka it uh, limits his mobility quite a bit there so you're only going to get about a quarter of a turn each way then he's got the traditional ball and swivel at the shoulder joint traditional ball and swivel at the elbow joint there we go. A little stiff to begin with. 
then uh, his gauntlets or big gloves have a twist feature at the mid arm, forearm, and that's pretty much all the articulation we have there in the arms. The chest piece is the traditional swivel there, and it's got the nice ab rock feature there, which is uh, got a lot more articulation there than I was expecting out of this figure. Standard T-hook at the waist, uh, his oversized parka bottom half here does limit his mobility a little bit, but uh, not as much as I was afraid it was going to. Side to side still fine, but front and back a little bit limited there. Does have a double knee joint, and at the ankle joint uh, ball and swivel there, so plenty of articulation there, so pretty straightforward. About what we've come to expect with most of these figures in this line. So, uh, yeah, really nothing bad about this figure. His only other accessory is his assault rifle. Um, it is pretty basic as well. Not a whole lot of detail work on it. Slides into his hand pretty easily there, so uh, really nothing worrisome whatsoever about that. It's uh, fairly basic, but it works. So if it works, it works. Uh, what more can you say there? Again, not really a stellar figure, but it's a, a nice little addition, I would say. As far as action features go, um, really the only one is that the cockpit opens and the figure slides inside. So let's see if we can stick this guy in here. I'm going to go ahead and bend his legs a little bit here, but I don't think it's going to make much difference here. Um, stick his arms in a little bit first and just kind of slide him down in there until his head rest comfortably and uh, that's pretty much it there so just kind of stick them in there and squish them in and close the cockpit and uh, you're good to go so yeah uh, I'm not as thrilled with this particular vehicle as I thought I was going to be uh, it's still a nice little thing but I mean, for a one-man sub, it's not really bad at all. It's just uh, I was hoping for a little bit more, I guess, out of this thing, but didn't really get a whole lot out of it. So uh, that's what it is. For whatever reason, I think it would probably work a whole lot better as some kind of uh, cryogenic chamber. But it's a one-man sub, so yeah, it is what it is. Uh, this thing is not really that hard to come by. Um, probably because it's not really that much to look at or to do anything with. So I guess not many people are all that interested in it. And I can, I guess, see why now that I've got it out and have looked at it a little bit, it's really nothing special at all. So hey, you might enjoy it. It's definitely something different, but beyond that, it's really not a standout at all. So. Yeah, I would probably just say pass on this thing unless you can get one for a really good price because it's there's really not much to it. So again, it's not bad. It's just uh, kind of dull. So whatever. That's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Like, share, whatever you feel like. Um, drop some comments down below. Let us know what you think of the Polar Shark Submarine or the Ice Storm figure. 
is it uh, am I missing something here is it something really awesome that I just didn't quite get <laughs> didn't understand I don't know let us know what you think about this thing so till next time yo joe